Well, I think we should get started mm -hmm. and talk about amputation capital. Yeah. And first, I just I want to welcome our viewers mm -hmm. and say that I am introducing Raymond Woodsmall, one of the authors of Amputation Capital and a recent graduate of the Leslie MFA in Creative Writing Program. Mm -hmm. um, I am Pam Petro. I teach on the program in both uh, graphic novel and comics, and I'm wearing my graphic novel and comics hat today, as well as creative nonfiction. And we, I can't convey, well, I'm going to try to convey how proud we are of Raymond for this achievement. It is a remarkable book, I think. Um, I've read just the tip of the iceberg, but you have truly made me think about it. It has been that tip of the iceberg wormed its way into my psyche, and now I can't wait to read the rest. So, so um, before you do. I just want to congratulate you first on this amazing achievement. And uh, maybe you can tell people, just uh, give them uh, a very brief sense of what the book is about. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Amputat, sorry, well, wow. I'm already messing up on my own title. Amputation Capital, it's a dystopian present uh, where celebrities and influencers sell body parts on a publicly traded skin market. And the story itself focuses on three characters that are displaced and objectified uh, by the skin business. Alfie is a, our protagonist is a lowly skin trader who dreams of becoming a CEO and Morgan is a recently divorced actress who sold a ring finger for $2 million. And Walter is a former porn star turned full-time anti-skin activist and organizer. And the, the and the three characters mirror different aspects of the skin business. So buying, selling, and sometimes eating. Uh, I, Cause you have to do this. I originally described it as like, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross meets Saw. <laughs> That's like the original <laughs> description of like pitching the book. Uh, that's so. perfect i think from the the what i've read it couldn't you couldn't nail it any better than that okay on that on that alone you've made me want to read it you've made me um deeply mm -hmm. intrigued by how you came up with these ideas which i'm going to get to in a second um tell tell our listeners how they can see the book what format does the the book exist in so the book's going to exist. So the books exist in five single issues and you'll be able to get those from your comic book store. We do have a time. However, I in a date, which is going to be this year. Uh, for publication as a Say that again. You mean for publication as yeah. a, a whole book? As a single issue. So in a single issue and then it'll come out every month. Um, uh, so for five issues and then it will all be one trade paper one trade paperback that you can Great, um, that's great. And is the first issue available yet? No, it's not available yet. Um, we have a date for it when it would, when we would like it to be in comic book stores. However, every time I say it, I feel like there's a little something that happens. Yeah. That we'll, we'll come back until it's absolutely final, but very soon is the answer. Okay, all right. So when you, uh, when it will be available, how do you plan to announce it so people can can keep track? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, so we're going to, so you can follow T Pub Comics, uh, which are the people who are putting it out. They're a really awesome comic book company. I am, so I came up with the concept and then the co creator, as well as there's another writer, Neil Gibson. And so you'll hear both of us posting about that, as well as the other people who worked on the book. There's an awesome, absolutely Great. awesome team. So we'll both be posting about when it'll come out and what comic book stores you can go to. The way single issues comics work is you can go to any comic book store. And if they don't have it there, if they don't subscribe to the T-Pub books, then you can just ask for it and they'll put it in a pull box and a catalog. And you can start a pull box at a comic shop. Uh, they're really, it's really fun to do also. Oh, that's great. That's, that's great. That's very helpful. So our, our viewers can find it. That's the yeah. most important thing. Yeah. So anyway. now I want to get into the meat of this. Yeah, absolutely. The meat. Ha ha. A little joke. <laughs> Where did you come up with this idea of selling body parts? I've been waiting to ask yeah. this question for a while now. Um, I live... I lived in Los Angeles for a while and I also worked in influence marketing 
which was where that idea comes from of uh of like the commodification of body parts the original idea just came from like the the this marketplace that we have in this world has a way of justifying other things like the fast food industry also justifies um fad diets you know um or other things processed food justifies you know something else so what would so like the uh, original thought was like you know if celebrities have like this constant market value that fluctuates and sometimes they just go all the way down Mm -hmm. you know and it's like well what would they do for money in this case a lot they have in a lot of times they'll have incredible bills to pay and living in los angeles i did know many people who were kind of on that scale Mm -hmm. who were very nice normal people you know and like because you think when they have so much money you would think uh, okay so if, if something happened to their career they'd be totally fine but then you don't account for the mortgage that they have to pay and the other things that rise so what would be like the immediate way if they failed to get mo- like if everything went terribly wrong and they were at rock bottom how would they get money and so the idea of people buying uh, celebrity body parts i think it's brilliant it's a, a metaphor made real and in some ways that's what horror is yeah or made real and when we objectify celebrities to mm. the point that it really is their physique their physical right. being that we honor so yeah it's just one quick jump yeah the selling of body parts and i just love that you've made it real yeah so it's uh that was definitely a lot of fun to write it originally started off as a short story and then I started How long have you been kicking it around, the idea? So the original concept started in 2017 with mm-hmm. a short story, and then I started working on it. Um, and then I was very lucky to meet um, uh, Neil Gibson, and he's a really awesome writer. And um, I hadn't really done, not really, I hadn't done comics before, and I'd always wanted to. I would be at comic book conventions, all mm-hmm. sorts of things. And... Um, Neil um, started talking with me about like, you know, so we started like bouncing ideas off of each other. We really liked working together a lot. And so we decided to just like create the book together. Tell me about that. So you and Neil co-wrote the script. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. So uh, Neil and I uh, co-wrote the book. Um, Neil has some awesome books that he's been writing for a while. He's been you know, he has a few books that come out a year. Wow. Uh, so he's, he's really, he's, he's, he really works a lot. So that was very helpful and taught me a great deal of things that I would not know about, like how to, cause I write, you know, I, I was in the BFA world. So I wrote prose and that sort of, and that sort of thing. And he was a, uh, a uh, great in helping, like he, he developed, uh, so much and uh, yeah it was it was great working like and also I would think too that if he um, publishes several books a year that work ethic of driving forward to get that done yeah on schedule must have also you know he's a he's a crazy person really. <laughs> he really is. he's in the he's in the UK. eye opening yeah he's in the UK and yeah, I, I don't think he ever stops like wow. <laughs> it's so, so. <laughs> Tell me about the process of how you both work, um, because it's how you work with another person yeah. in creating a text, because yeah. uh, it's something working on my own, yeah. it's too hard for me to imagine. Do you bounce ideas off of each other? Who's the one who writes them down? Or do you do that, in, you take one part and he takes another? You know, it's funny, is because we worked on it. So how we would do it is, um, we would kind of both come with ideas, but we did all the writing live, like with each other across, like as we're like a writer's room. Mm-hmm. So um, similar to how they would do television or something like that. that so every great. thing. So we spent a crazy amount of time on Zoom calls and um, uh, on the phone and all that sort of stuff. So it was just like, so there was really not, there wasn't much of a moment where either of us were like, either of us were alone writing it, if that makes sense. We were writing it together and then okay. like edit it live. Like, okay, let's maybe read that back. 
And what's funny is I think the funniest part, if anybody ever sees this, it'll be like absolutely hilarious. If anybody would ever see us doing this, we would read different parts, like a script. <laughs> <laughs> like, and they go, no, that doesn't sound right. All right, you say this now. Okay, that sounds a little bit better. <laughs> oh, that's great. And what I love about your answer is that it underscores how much graphic novel and comics is like um, in the MFA world, like stage and screen. Right. That, that this, we have characters acting out visually, acting out scenes. Um, and it's in some ways more like the storyboards yeah. of stage and screen than it is like writing um, a short story and then breaking yeah. it down. So yeah. that's, I think that's really interesting. So tell me also that I know there are other people involved in this book too. And I know it, it took a village, and yeah. a little, an international village. Yeah, it did. Everybody who works on the book is just funny how it worked out this way. It's pretty common now, I know, for this to happen. But everybody who worked on the book is in a different country. So that's there's, wild. Yeah, so there, Neil's, in the, Neil's in London, Neil's in the UK. Um, I'm obviously here in New York. Andre Rizzo, who's the um, who's the artist, is in Italy, and he um, teaches comics at a school there, mm -hmm. as well as works on uh, Aspen Comics books. Mm -hmm. uh, he's worked on some Aspen mm -hmm. stuff. And then uh, Liz Buenaventura is in the Philippines. So it's kind of it's it's. I think the funniest part about it is like the weird times you'll get text messages or something because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, you have to mute your phone so that you're not yeah. woken in the middle of the night by people in other countries yeah exactly so, <laughs> so yeah because because liz i think it's a uh, it's a it's a i think it might be a 12 hour time difference with tell her. us what liz what role she had she's the colorist so liz is the colorist um uh -huh. she's a brilliant colorist um she'd worked on uh, one of neo's books before i actually have it right here that's not really placed. It's just funny that it's right here. He's a brilliant <laughs> colorist. Um, she does a lot of uh, a lot of great stuff. Um, also, one of the nicest people ever. Like fantastic. I, it's great to have a group that you you know coming together to produce this book, but also having a good time doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Especially like the funny is like when you don't know each other <laughs> like <laughs> outside of the book. Yeah. Do you also have someone did the lettering? Yes, Jed McPherson uh, does the lettering, and he's in Scotland, so he's the he's the closest to Neil. So yeah. Okay, okay. So um, how, what was your your and Neil relationship um with the the artist? Um, I'm, I just forgot the artist's name again. Oh no, it's okay. Andre Rizzo. Andre, um, did he read the script and come up with the images, or did you guys, um, write into uh, give him ex suggestions as to what those yeah. images should be. So the script is pretty detailed. We do, you know, um, when doing a sequential comic strip, it sometimes, it depends on how different people work, but we're pretty detailed with all the images. So we put pretty clearly like what characters on what panel and then Andre comes back because Andre is a very creative person will come back and be like you know can I maybe change this put this over here something like that which is always always cool he always does an awesome job that's great that's great that he had that input but you gave him the direction so you essentially gave him the direction and then he also had freedom within that to uh to make suggestions to give input yeah exactly that's exactly so did he design the page layouts or did you guys do that? We do the, we do the page layout. So I think, I think most artists um, in uh, sequential comics uh, usually like to have everything like laid out before they get in and draw because usually they're working on several books at once. You know? And also you, you think in those terms uh, yeah. because whatever is going to be pictured will not be spoken. So you, yeah need to have that hold that in your mind's eye yeah before it uh so you can continue right. so the sequence yeah. can continue yeah absolutely so now to get into the 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 story um the character of alfie just hits the reader in the face in the beginning mm -hmm. he is one of the most um uh 
determined characters I've met in fiction in a long time. To, yeah. To give it a nice word, he literally almost leaps off the page. Tell me how you you guys came up with Alfie, and tell us a little bit about Alfie. Uh, Alfie's um, Alfie's a skin salesman who is. Uh, <laughs> Alfie's a skin salesman who's not a great individual. Um, <laughs> probably, I really think of him as like one of the least likable uh, <laughs> people you could you could come up with. I kind I think of him a little bit like uh, I I thought of like when introducing him, I thought back to the like the scenes you'll have in movies where you'll have uh, pushy car salesmen. And then we kind of go back and see why he's like that uh, a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, Al Al Alfie, for lack of a better word, Alfie's an absolute dick in the beginning. So and and that yes, that was very clear, <laughs> but very memorable. Yeah. And, and you guys did what after the first few pages I thought was unthinkable um, for for our listeners. Alfie just uh, bursts into a meeting and takes it over. Yeah. and is trying to sell himself with the one of the hardest sells mm -hmm. uh, that that I've witnessed in a long time to to someone else's detriment and you just think what an awful individual yeah but then a few pages later you do the amazing feat of of actually making me feel sorry for him temporarily mm -hmm. anyway, um, and deepening his character and I thought that was pretty remarkable yeah, I think, um, you know, Al Alfie kind of represents the ideology, a really toxic ideology that's not, definitely not pro in the book, but he represents the pull yourself up by your bootstraps ideology, and he will step on anybody to get to the next, to get to the next spot. Yeah, beginning. it's we that do. ideology, which can be very positive, but taken so far that it becomes very yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's one of those things. It's just, uh, you know, it's just, um, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the, cause it's a flashback scene, I think uh, with, with his dad, where his, yeah. his dad tells him that he has to pull himself up by his bootstraps as, as his first job. You know, I don't, I don't think people are born with that ideology. I think that kind of gets hammered into you from, uh, capitalism, uh, over and over again, like, you know, um, so this, this character does represent that that mindset um, in the most toxic way possible. <laughs> but well, this is one of the things that um, in this first section that I admired so much is that the characters are very vivid. Uh, they they've already inhabited my imagination, mm -hmm. and yet I I see clearly that you have a message in this book, and mm -hmm. that these characters are being shaped by bigger forces than themselves such as capitalism run amok mm -hmm. and that um is is that message is coming through to me but never in a didactic way mm -hmm. and i find that um you know a, another feat that you guys have pulled off um i i i see where the metaphors lie but those metaphors are never in my face yeah well thank you um oh you're welcome i i think it's an achievement <laughs> Yeah, we worked we worked very hard on that particular aspect uh, of it. So we're 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 happy with the book. Um, uh, yeah. So. Great, great. Well, me too. Um, and now I have another question for you because mm -hmm. it, I've known you as a writer oh. and a creative person, mm -hmm. and there you seem in this book, you and Neil, to have absolutely gotten into the. Um, the heart of advertising, yeah. of the idea of the hard sell, the psychology of advertising. Mm -hmm. um, how did you got, where is, where is this coming from? Uh, did you guys have to research? Some research, uh, definitely some research. I worked in that world for uh, a while. I worked in, um, uh, I worked in, like I mentioned before, I worked in influencer marketing. Uh, ah, okay. So this was, you know, kind of, uh, some material that I'm very familiar with. Um, so with with this character and his, you know, and not just his, but the whole company's advertising <laughs> scheme kind of comes straight out of uh, a textbook of startups. 
of like startup companies, uh, which is, you know, who I uh, worked for for uh, a while. So I got it. Okay. I influencer marketing. I missed that. Mm -hmm. Just as you said that earlier, the puppy barked. Oh, oh yeah. I missed that phrase, but I see now. So that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. And so we would, you know, that would be one of the, you know, things uh, I would have to, you know, I would do for a wage would be to talk with influencers. And, you know, it wasn't like, um, in, in this case, I definitely was not an Alfie in the case of making a lot of money from it because I was, you know, working for like, you know, it's just, it's literally just a wait job uh, for, for me uh, at the time when I was doing it. And, uh, but you kept your eyes open and you certainly learned the trade. Yeah, it definitely is. And with that being said, there's so many, like, there's a lot of influencers who are super cool. The book is not like anti-influencer <laughs> at all or like anti the people who are doing you know, uh, the, the, you know, businesses of advertising and kind of, you know, branding themselves. Um, you know, so many of the people that I talked to who were influencers, some of them met, met the stereotype, frankly. Mm -hmm. Others, um, you know, were a lot of times just like creative people who stumbled on it, you know, were like, yeah. like taking cool photos and then sure. <laughs> like blew up and now they make, you know, made money from posting about other companies and, you know, but now the advertising that exists now is like, there's no advertisement here. Like, look at me enjoying this thing that, you know, like that's the kind of advertising that exists now. Right. And to get somebody you on board. Me, you want to be me. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. I yeah. want you to want to be me. Yeah, exactly. Like, look at me do this cool thing that will make you also be like me doing cool. this cool thing. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And, and getting. So that makes a lot of sense. Right. This is where you where your background okay that's really interesting um and that's one of the things that you bring mm -hmm. to this, this mm -hmm. book. so now just to, to mention the end of the first section um mm -hmm. i really love it's been driven by alfie driven by alfie's um overwhelming need for success in this mm -hmm. business but then you complicate that narrative by bringing in this um violent gang of avengers yeah. Um, who really want to uh, put an end to the, the skin trade. Mm -hmm. And they um, come down on Alfie really hard and made me afraid for Alfie, even yeah. though he's a despicable human being. Yeah. Um, so I just wondered if you could tell us, are these characters going to have a, um, a bigger role mm -hmm. in the book? Um, are they going to have a role as, as strong as Alfie's? Would yeah, absolutely. So they're the group that comes in they're called the they're a coalition like kind of a small coalition of like people who were influencers and actors yeah they're called the phantom pain project and <laughs> after you know uh, years of alienation from their jobs and from selling you know and all sorts of different terrible things that come with this world uh they uh, do a very violent act uh, in the beginning of the book. And we do focus, we do start to, we do focus on them, the next issue and the issue after that. So they, oh. they are, frankly, they're the, they, they become the likable characters. Well, they, the they really interested me because they were um, trying to do a good thing violently. I mean, they're the means that they were trying, that they were using were very distressing, but they were on the side of, of the side I would be on of trying to put an end to this kind of right. business. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I really, uh, they're definitely, they were definitely my favorite group to create. Um, sure. I uh, can see that complicated, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So they're, uh, they were, they were, they were so cool. Walter, I'm excited for where people get to see where Walter is specifically one of the, one of the uh, main organizers of the group uh, goes after this. Uh, I'll be interested. I, I will definitely be interested. Yeah, <laughs> they, they develop a lot. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Too. Well, Raymond, one last question. Um, can you give us at all any like little hint where the, the book is headed or is, is that absolutely forbidden? It, it, I, I could say that it gets progressively 
so much fucking weirder. It's like <laughs> that's that's gonna be very interesting. It starts off really weird when people read the first book, and it just keeps getting weirder and more surreal as this world starts to the dystopian present starts to just like <laughs> like morph and turn into another uh sort of monster um but you know uh ultimately you know it's about those three characters i'm uh morgan because you don't see much of morgan and no but we met her yeah so you meet morgan Maynard in the first and she doesn't say very much in the first issue uh which is intentional because she does come back and have her own uh issues so i can say that morgan plays a big part in the story oh, that's interesting from here um so that's that's another part you know you kind of see morgan through alfie's eyes mm -hmm. so you don't get too much of morgan in the first she's kind that's of just that's how it was yeah that's how yeah. i experienced it right she's, she interested me right uh, you know why has has her star literally you know fallen yeah. and, right. and who was she and who will she become yeah and that that is something that uh i think is gonna be uh, a lot of fun uh kind of becomes you know the, the definitely becomes part of her character what happened in the fur in the beginning mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's it it gets weird <laughs> it gets really really weird you have tempted me now she's a sympathetic <laughs> character so i'm interested to see what happens with mm -hmm. her but also just by saying that it gets weirder yeah <laughs> i can't wait i can't wait to see where your imaginations are going to take us but um thank you this sounds just magnificent amputation capital it's it's coming out serially and then it's coming out in trade paperback yep sometime in 2021 yep uh very soon, hopefully. So keep looking, everybody. And Raymond, thank you so much. This has been really wonderful. I've, yeah, I've I appreciate the um, the uh, getting to read the book early. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, that was my reason for wanting to do this, <laughs> so yeah. I could find out what you're up to. So thank you on behalf of Graphic Novel and Comics and the Leslie MFA. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for doing this. Okay. Take care, Raymond. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. And say, oh, I mm -hmm. should say thank you, Cambridge Common Writers. Yes. Um, for hosting us and for coming up uh, with this format for us to have this discussion. You guys do brilliant work and the program really needs you. And we're so glad that you formed and are doing what you're doing. So thank you, Cambridge Common Writers. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Take care. Have bye -bye. a good one.